created live on Fireside. Uh, hello, everybody, and good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Sustainable Funding Series, in which we explore different ways that creatives, technologists, and educators are building sustainable funding models around their projects. Um, this is our first edition of the series here on Fireside, so I'm, I'm extra excited to, to be sharing sharing the series with all of you today on Fireside. And um, we have, uh, in today's episode, I'm joined by um, Shane, who is um, AKA Dad Cipher, Melissa Frund, and, uh, and Adam Waring. And so all of whom have been creating NFTs in, in very different ways. And so, we're, we're going to learn a little bit about that on this episode, as, as well as a little bit of a background on, on what NFTs are and for the creatives out there, you know, how they can start sort of exploring the space. So on that note, um, how would each of you sort of describe NFTs? All right. Uh, well, obviously, NFTs mean a, a lot of different things a lot of different people um you know obviously uh, a, a lot of people use or imagine nfts as art um you know being able to see exactly who to give credit to when it comes to sort of the uh, the images right um for for myself anyways um we don't do any art um we're we're actually digital real estate um our, our nft is essentially a tower um, well, two towers, uh, different apartments within that tower, and uh, yeah, we, we sell that and people purchase it and essentially have a, a residence that will uh, end up in the metaverse. So uh, that's what so, NFTs are to me. Okay, so, 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 uh, so to you, NFTs are residents in the metaverse or... Yeah, well, that, that's you... what our NFT actually is. Yes, I know that's what yours is, but how would you explain them in general? Oh, yeah, no, essentially they are uh, transactions or tokens that are, are put on the uh, Ethereum blockchain or Solana blockchain or whatever blockchain it actually uh, exists on. Okay, and um, and Melissa, how would you how would you describe them? Um, I would uh, kind of same thing as Shane said, it's, it's tokens on the blockchain and it's, it, it's proof of ownership. So, um, I, I don't know who explained it to me. It might've been Shane. I, I can't remember who told me this, but a good way to think of an NFT because it's so abstract is, um, you might go in front of some random house on the street and you take a picture of yourself in front of it. And you're like, I own this house, but you don't actually own this house when you actually uh, take a picture in front of your own house, you own it and on the blockchain, that's what you're proving. So I, I don't know if that made enough sense, <laughs> but um, it, it's proof of ownership and a token. So it's showing everyone what you own. And what's interesting about the blockchain is you can see everyone's transactions. So. Um, Go so and you're, you're, you're touching on some interesting ideas here, like, um, especially when it comes to ownership, because there are NFTs out there that don't require somebody to own the, um, the, the, the item. Um, and, and it's actually, and it's a, a point that I want to get into later on in the podcast. Um, but sort of just, just thinking in, in, in that sense, um, Adam, I know you've been exploring, um, uh, blockchain or sorry, um, uh, NFTs, both with your friend, Andrew Levine and, and also then through some of your experiments that you've been doing both through your own art and, uh, uh, on GFAM, how would, how would you describe it? Hi everyone. Uh, so I would describe NFTs as really just a digital signature. So it can be anything that's linked to um, a block on a blockchain. Um, yeah, it really can be anything. Uh, so I'm excited about NFTs. Like it can be real estate deeds. It can be wills. It can be an image, a video. 
uh, really just anything that you want one copy of or yeah, one authorized, authenticated copy of. Um, so you can't just control C, control V, everything. Um, that's, uh, that's great. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving that you guys are all touching on the ownership point because I think it's one of the areas and we'll get into this further on in the, in the podcast, but I think it's one of the areas where it's, um, where I think it's a stumbling block, an obstacle at the moment on, on sort of, uh, approaching like the full uses within, within NFTs. Um, I've seen, um, at the beginning of, um, I've seen there sort of being burgeoning sort of, um, communities out there that are using NFTs in different ways. I specifically am thinking around film and things like that, where, you know, people don't take ownership of the film. Um, but they are taking like, you know, they're renting it, um, so that they can watch it or they're, 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 I guess, you know, they're, I guess in that, in that sense, they could be owning a copy of it. Um, and, and I think as we sort of start to look at some different spaces um, and different ad- like ways of adopting NFTs, like especially around things like education, around healthcare, um, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that because, because I think we, we, there, there needs to be sort of a bit of a, a movement beyond just uh, just ownership for it to be adopted into some of those spaces. Um, uh, so Melissa, you're doing um, with with your project at the moment, Anatomical Hearts. You're sort of looking at NFTs. Um, you're exploring NFTs in in the way that uh, a lot of people will think of NFTs out there, like from from um, for those of us who who remember the uh, crypto uh, kitties when they when they first sort of blew up on the web in 2017, um, can you tell us a little bit about what your your what you've been creating with anatomical hearts? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what? I'll turn on interview mode because you brought it up earlier, and then you can see me. Can you can you see me or? There we, there we go. Uh, not yet. Oh, now we can. Okay. So I've been um, creating art for a number of years and I heard about Crypto Kitties and I heard it in 2018. So I wasn't as cutting edge as you. And I kind of promptly forgot about it, didn't do anything with it, didn't realize it was as deep as it was, that it could be applied to art and all these other things. And then when I heard about people this spring selling this art, I was like, I create art. I should get on this platform. And um, I ended up, um, I have two projects right now. My first project was anatomical hearts. So I drew anatomical hearts and I did that because my daughter has was born with a congenital heart defect. And she, just as a way to cope, I. I needed to do something. So I ended up taking those hearts and creating a collection out of them. And that collection I launched in September. And um, in about two weeks, I sold out all of my hearts. And um, I started a spinoff collection called Anatomical Project. And I'm doing more than just hearts. I'm doing like the liver, the kidney, um, brain, and lungs right now. And I am just trying to figure out um, this new space. So, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and this is a new way to capture, um, just to interact and connect with people. I've, I've met so many new friends this way, and um, it, it's, it's proof of ownership. I, all of my art is one-to-one, so you get that. And you can personally, I, I've, had people contact me and send me an email and tell me they're going to print it up and put it in their office. So they're really connecting with the art and it's people from all over the country that I, or all over the world really that, you know, I, I couldn't connect with on maybe Instagram or Facebook, but here um, the community is so excited and energetic. I've been able to chat with them and they see my art. I'm excited about them. They're excited about me. It's been really interesting. So, so with your art, because your art initially came out in a coloring book, correct? Correct. 
different. Yes. So now that you're sort of selling the individual hearts out there um, as uh, as NFTs, are you still able to use your your hearts? Like, say, if you came out with with your new um, uh, sort of anatomical organs that you're creating, if 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 you had interest in a new sort of coloring book around that, would you still be able to use any of the hearts that you've sold in that new coloring book or, or would that limit your, your, your usage of them? So when you buy an NFT from an artist, you don't get their copyright. Um, I think that's what you're asking. Um, yes. Yes. You, get, you, you know, um, let's say you, by any physical piece of art, you you own the art, but you can't um, reproduce it and say it's yours or claim it however you want. So I am able to, um, when I finish my other series, I'm going to make them into coloring books too. And um, a lot of people in my community find value from that because I'm going to talk about my NFTs in my future coloring books bring more people to the community and then it's um it's interesting that a lot of people are they're doing this art in the nft space but um there's a number of projects that are pulling in physical items into the nft space so for me um with my abilities and my know-how i'm doing it with coloring books other people might do it with a video game which i know it's still you know on the internet and things like that, but it's, it's trying to bridge something that's just, you know, on the, on the, on the internet to something physical and kind of connect the two and reach out to different people. So, so then, so, so, so you as the artist retains the copyright. um, And when you, so when you're selling those different, um, uh, you know, your different uh, drawings out there, your different hearts out there. Um, can more than one person buy them um, for the di- for use in the digital space? Or can they only, um, or, or are you, or is that dependent on the artist and how they set, decide to set? I, it, it's, it's dependent on the artist. So I know, um, I think there's an artist, Minds, I know there's some collabs pieces of his that he, there are 50 copies of the same piece of art and all of those people own one, all of those people own one copy of it. Um, and I will say there are some NFTs out there. When you purchase the NFT, you get the copyright to do whatever you want with it. Um, so that it, it's really dependent on the artist and you should, you know, if it doesn't explicitly say you're getting the copyrights, I would never assume that you're getting the copyright from an NFT. So, okay. So it's, it's, it's more like um, how you'd sell like photography or, or, you know, or prints or, or things like that. Yes. Um, and so, so with that, um, um, as for you as the artist, are how do you set up uh, what those different sort of what the different rules are around your piece of artwork when you go to sell it? Uh, the real answer is I don't know if anyone knows at this point. It's all so new. I um, got into this in September, and I, I know I knew no one that was in this space, no one at all. Like. I couldn't even talk to anyone or bounce ideas off of this. So I I decided after researching all these different avenues of different things, I just decided to make it, you know, one-to-one art, one copy of each, no copyright transfer. Um, But now that I'm in the space, I have a whole bunch of new friends, but it's really dependent on the artist. And I don't think there is a right way or a wrong way to do any of that. I've seen, you know, people on all sorts of combos of what I've said be really, really successful. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, your, your previous audience, your scope, wh- what, what you want to do. Yeah. You're hitting on to a lot of beauty. Um, there's, um, uh, I've, I've kind of been, um, spending, you know, a lot of time at, um, uh, NFT con the last couple of days and, uh, and sort of exploring, you know, the different, different ways people have been talking about the space and you're hitting on all the things that you know for myself as a storyteller as an educator is um 
alleviates the concerns of, of, of that, you know, sort of aspect of ownership because, um, I kept sort of hearing things about uh, sort of ownership, ownership, ownership and status, uh, which which it was hitting me is kind of counter what, you know, a lot of what we're looking for with sort of Web3 with uh, building equity and building decentralization and uh, removing gatekeepers simply as you know, if, if we're talking ownership and access, um, especially at the prices some F- NFTs are going for at the moment, that, you know, limits a lot of people's access. Uh, and it limits, um, it limits, like, it can, depending on how it's approached, it can limit, you know, the spread of culture or education or things like that, which is, which has been, I, I've been sort of fascinated by this space, but those have also been concerns that have flared up, like, you know, as I'm, but if it's the artist's choice and the artist has the option to, you know, still retain their copyright and, and use it in other ways, then, then, you know, it brings so much of the beauty of, 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 of actually making it more equity, like creating more equity for the artist. It, it's, um, yeah, definitely. Um, it's something I just want to touch on, on the other side of things for an artist, it's, I've been doing this for a number of years and I, I, I do it part-time. I'm a stay at home mom. So I can't say I make a living doing this. Um, but getting into this space and being in it in a month and a half, I could see making an, a living just doing this. And that's something that I've never seen before. Um, every time your piece, you, so so I have a hundred piece collection, right? Yeah. And so let's say you bought it and say you ended up selling it to a stranger. Every time you sell it to someone, I get a small commission from it from it and it sustains the artist to create more art. It's like, you know, the artist can um, take a percentage, but it's, it's basically royalties and you have open C is what I use as my, um, my, my uh, uh, marketplace. Mm -hmm. Um, So marketplace take a a cut, the, the artist gets a royalty and, and there's no middleman. There's no gallery that takes a, so it's, it, I guess what you were saying, you're, it can sustain an artist, which is something that I think is pretty cool. And, yes. and for me, I, I priced my, I, I want to say I'm a pretty small artist. Let's just say that. And I price all of my art at 0.05 Ethereum. I hope it's okay that I bring this up. It's no, like absolutely. $150, which I know sounds like a lot, but in this space is a really, 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 like really low entry point for someone collecting. And I really wanted to reach people and that was my goal. And I know people that sell it for more and that's their choice and different things like that. But it's, um, there's artists out there that are always up and coming. And I know you were talking about, um, I think you were saying, what were you saying? Like equity and just sometimes people charge a lot and you're trying to make sure everyone can get into the space. And I, yeah, it wasn't so much more about people getting into the space. It was more about um, my concern with um, uh, my concern with, with it, with, with ownership was um, especially when you've got some, you know, some celebrities that are paying ridiculous amounts of money. Um, It was more concern for one of the things that the web's done is it's, it's opened up the, the world to being able to access things like culture, things like education. And my, my one fear, you know, as I was sort of approaching all this, and I was excited as I was approaching it, because I, because I'm constantly looking for solutions for, um, uh, for building equity for for creatives, um, but my one fear was that if everybody took ownership of different things and there was higher and higher prices associated, that that would leave out a good chunk of the world and would create fences around everything. 
Um, but if, if, as you say, if it's like, you know, the artist is selling a print and that person then has the right to use that print and that, that doesn't create offense that, you know. For sure. I, I, and I think you have to, we're, we're so early that there's just so many new artists out there too. So there's always going to be people just entering the space, wanting to get their art out there. And I, I, I think it's, um. I understand your concerns because I had to research everything you talked about. Like, am I giving up my rights? Am I, you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. And I, I spent a long time just trying to understand and it, it it's scary because not, there's not a lot written about it. Um, but from everything I've understood, it, it feels like a, a really, um, it can be unequal but or not equal but I, I it's much more level than any other platform I've been on so that's yeah in my experience no that's exciting and, and uh, Shane you're kind of approaching uh, approaching this from a um from where you're you're looking at uh digital real estate so 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 real estate in terms of and I'm I'm guessing this is sort of so for years, I'm, I'm somebody who builds story worlds, and uh, I refer to, to those story worlds as, and, and what I'm creating out there as being in the digi sphere. And, and I, I know that in the NFT space, they're using the, the, the term metaverse, which I suspect is 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 similar to what i'm talking about but with with your um just sort of to put this kind of into terms that everybody might understand um with digital real estate you're you're sort of it's it's almost like you know the way kids are building minecraft worlds and adults are building minecraft worlds or or like the worlds that were built back in the day in second life is is that is that correct that, that's actually a pretty fair assessment. Um, obviously, uh, digital real estate is definitely, uh, it's been around. Um, there's uh, really big, uh, really big metaverses out there like uh, Decentraland and Sandbox and Network. And, uh, there's more and more that are actually popping up every single day. Um, where we differ um, is that w we're going to be building sort of towers within a metaverse. So um, what we're trying to do is build, you know, a community of people um, that will obviously uh, meta live with one another, so to speak, but um, they'll, they'll all be sort of housed within sort of the Discord, or our, our Discord group. And um, we collabed with uh, quite a few large projects and we actually have a lot more uh, on the slate. I think last time I checked, we have about 40 requests to get into the towers. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll become sort of like the, the little, I don't know, maybe like Mecca is probably the correct term, M main hub for, you know, NFT holders uh, to sort of share ideas, share utility ideas uh, when it comes to um, sort of the future of NFTs and they'd be quote unquote meta living in uh, Ethereum towers. And so, so in that space, um, do people go in as themselves? Do they go in as kind of yeah. a no, they, uh, they, avatar of their choosing? No, they, they definitely go in as themselves. Um, so right now, um, we're a free to mint uh, sort of project, which means it doesn't cost you anything except for uh, gas. So we're in extreme high demand. Um, we, we made Tower 1 just whitelist only at this point. And we actually had to restrict the number of collabs because obviously we we have a lot of people in our Discord server that you know w would likely not end up with an apartment if we just did 100% collabs. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, quite the group um, uh, of individuals. Uh, everything from you know some of the bigger ones like uh, Crypto Dads, uh, Boss Beauties, uh, you name it. Um, you know. And now, will this will this like uh, I I understand right now it's in in your Discord space. Mm -hmm. Eventually, will like will there be like you know a sort of a, a virtual space? Yeah, that people can kind of walk around and you know sit in their apartment for the evening and yeah. have guests over to a dinner party. <laughs> Absolutely, like that's the whole idea behind it, right? So right yeah. now it, it is just kind of existing in the Discord, and, and it's because you know there's restrictions to specific metaverses and 
let's call a spade a spade. It's not cheap to, to build into a metaverse. So being no. free to mint right now, it, it's not exactly like we're, we're rolling around in cash, so to speak. And unfortunately, they don't take hugs and kisses to get into the metaverse. <laughs> I mean, if they did, I would happily do it. But, you know, it, it's going to cost us, you know, quite a bit. So Tower One, yeah. we're, we're just trying to build a really solid community behind us. You know that'll that'll be around for once Tower Two goes up, and Tower Two will actually be paid a mint, and that's a that's a different story. But uh, at that point, that'll that'll start sort of our metaverse fund. And um, and so with this, um, like so, presumably, you know, it can create sort of creative hubs for exactly people from all over the world to exactly. collaborate on projects yes there you have it that's that's the whole point behind sort of our project so it originally started as you know sort of like a, a loot style and and for all those that aren't aware um a loot style um nft is just essentially just like a bunch of words on a piece of paper slash on like a on a screen and they go for crazy amounts of money um, and it's almost like sort of like a D and D style, um, but that quickly evolved. So we we had like an architect that joined sort of the the group, and he was like, "Hey, you know, do you want me to put together some you know potential drawings of what uh, Ethereum towers could look like?" And then next thing you know, uh, you know, somebody that was well versed in the metaverse, uh, you know, kind of like hopped on and was like, "Hey, you know, would you guys ever be interested?" And then slowly but surely, um, different individuals started to join up. Um, we had a whole bunch of different collabs that wanted to, you know, sort of get in on the project itself. And it, it's kind of taken a life on its own. Like uh, I joined, I joined the project September the 15th. And uh, uh, before that I was actually working with uh, Melissa um, on anatomical hearts, um, getting her all, all set up with discord and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's gone completely crazy uh, over the past, essentially a month, I guess today, right. It's today the 14th. I, at this point, I'm not even kidding you. You just lose track of time. Every single day just blends into another. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. Like, it, it, you know, I I've, I've been kind of keeping an ear on on NFTs for a while, but I I didn't really properly sort of start to dive in um, until this week. Um, like, you know, where I started digging deeper, and. That's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing how it's just changing at infinite speeds, like, and like how a week seems like it's like, you know, a couple of months in terms of, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, you, you run off of caffeine and just adrenaline pretty much all day long when it comes to, to NFTs. Um, if people think that, you know, I'm, I'm going to start building an NFT and, you know, it's going to be a nice, cozy job you got another thing coming for you. Um, I'm sure Melissa can also attest to that. Um, you're working, and granted, you're loving what you're doing, um, but you're working pretty long hours and you're trying to make connections with as many different people as humanly possible. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. So so as you get to like, um, so obviously you're you're going to be selling some of these apartments um in in your tower so that you're able to virtually build it is that correct yeah so tower two um will probably mint sometime next month like mm -hmm. sometime probably late november right now we're, we're kind of doing sort of like a a soft launch or you know pre-launch whatever you want to really call it um where we're ironing out some of the bugs kind of building sort of that hype around living in ethereum towers um, we're also then, you know, building like a token in the back end. So, you know, getting into DeFi, um, we're right now putting together like a smart contract and, you know, the space itself is evolving so fast that we also need to get like lawyers involved just to make sure yeah. everything's above board. So we have like a lawyer that, that we, you know, that we sought out, um, to make sure that, you know, SCC is not going to come after us, you know, make sure that OpenSea is not going to be, you know, breathing down our necks. So, um, we have him on board um, in terms of like our, our tokenization piece because um, the, the way that we have it set up right now, you know, uh, we, we have sort of like a resident uh, reward structure um, set up in place. And we wanted to make sure that also passed sort of the, the test um, of like the OpenSea and the, the SAC rewards uh, sort of program. And 
there's there's a lot of moving parts to say the least and you know making sure that your smart contract is all set up so we have a lot of professionals in the background helping us um to make sure that things go smoothly and um so thinking long term on this do you have any plans so that you keep kind of so that you're so that you're able to bring different people into those creative spaces at different times to, to share, to interact, to engage? Oh, there's so much that we want to do. So much that we want to do. You know, it's crazy. So our community and uh, anybody that kind of like joins in, like we have an idea room and, and that idea room gets, you know, everybody puts in, you know, sort of their ideas, what they would like to see. So, you know, obviously uh, it started off with sort of different amenity rooms. So, um, you know, if let's say you're interested in working out, there's like the gym and we have like an amenities leader in there and he's actually like a personal trainer and like a nutritionist and he provides like daily advice. And then we have, you know, the garden where, you know, we have like a resident green thumb in there. Um, but a- as sort of the project evolves, uh, we're going to do stuff like, you know, right now we're actually talking with somebody to do like a, a weekly newsletter and then people will be able to write like uh open pieces for it um we're gonna have uh potentially like a youtube page and have it almost like the you know ethereum towers tv and you know we'll do like cooking shows and we'll do you know workout shows and uh, kind of whatever do like uh resident interviews stuff like that just keep everybody sort of engaged and then uh you know obviously down the line there'll be opportunities for you know potentially showing displaying your art in sort of like a gallery um, the, the, obviously, you know, uh, right now, uh, our, our main goal is to, to get everything up and running in terms of tower one and then, you know, uh, tower two launch. And then from there, you know, uh, looking at, uh, other ways of, you know, keeping our, our, our community involved, whether that be through, you know, uh, furniture or through, uh, Ethereum resorts is another thing that, uh, you know, we have on our roadmap. AR and VR integration. It's uh, it's exciting times to say the least. And and so and does it work this in a similar way to like with say royalties the way it would with um, the artwork where if people sell their space later on like you know their their apartments. Yeah. So you... at that point we get a, a specific percentage as well. Yeah. Um, that way uh, it goes into sort of like a community wallet. Um, you know we. We have specific funds set aside for charities. We have specific funds set aside for um, sort of the tokenization piece, um, the metaverse uh, fund. Um, all, all of that gets placed into sort of a, a wallet and then kind of like divvied up and then you kind of go from there. And um, um, with that, like, so so just, um, sorry, this is just me being the creative type and uh, also um, thinking in terms of... Um, of equity at the moment have you guys thought of like a um an artist in residence or things like that so that say you can bring people in from different parts of the world that maybe or different sort of socioeconomic groups at times uh you know right now i'm actually working on a deal with uh like a collab with a brand new artist that's from singapore um Mm -hmm. And they're a brand new NFT project. Uh, they're actually called the Pangeans. Mm-hmm. Um, they have really cool artwork. Um, when we when we initially started throwing out ideas for collaborations, um, her name is Crypto Jin. She reached out to me. We scheduled up a call, and you know, uh, obviously, you know, at that point they're just starting off. They they had less than I think like a hundred Twitter followers. They had less than like seventy five uh, Discord members. Um, and I said, you know what, we all have to start somewhere um, and we're, we're taking them on board. And once they officially mint their project, uh, we'll be doing some sort of collab with them. But Cool. Um, um, okay. So, um, uh, but you haven't sort of sort of touched on that, that, well, you're, you're dealing with all the immediate right now. So yeah. <laughs> that's believe all me, you, should, you should see my discord. It's quite literally like. <laughs> 70 dms deep um well i have to say like i was like kind of bowled over by how quickly you and melissa respond on discord 
Oh, <laughs> as, my, my I'm, I'm kind of one of the, the, right the, the, the gals that was in the early, um, like was one of the pioneers in the, in the uh, social media spaces. And uh, one of the things I've taught myself that I have to do, you know, over the years is, is um, not have anything pinging at me or, um, or, or feel any need to respond right away just because otherwise, I mean, like, oh, and I was thinking with how quickly you were responding. I'm like, oh, he is busy in this space. Oh, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy right now. Yeah. Um, like I said, like three weeks. Well, how long has it been? Melissa, has it, has it been just like a month close to that? Um yeah, well, it's crazy happened. looking at how much both of you have done in such a short period of time. That's what kept blowing me away too with all of this. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's pretty crazy. Like uh, I'm talking to people that quite literally, you know, a month ago I I would have dreamed of having a chance to you know talk with. Um, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing what can happen in a very short period of time in the NFT space. Uh, can I just say something? personal a, a little bit. So I launched on the September 1st, let's say, and I think I met Shane a few days later. He was my first NFT friend. So um, he, you know, he, he helped me. He helped me get my Discord going. And I was like, I told my husband, I have this stranger asking me if I want help. And I was like, this is crazy. This is exciting. People want to be in this community. I've never experienced that. And I've had other people just reach out to me in like different ways. And it, you know, he, he did that. And now he was talking with, um, he, then he started his, uh, Ethereum towers project and it's been a complete whirlwind uh, whirlwind. It's been amazing. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, and yeah. I think, I think that right now is true for this whole burgeoning creators economy that is is really trying to rework um, rework the web and the digital sphere, right? Or or the metasphere. I need to 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 get onto the new lingo um, at the moment. I mean, this is how Adam, who's um, who's uh, who's who's the third gentleman or the third the third person up here at or, up here with us um that's how he and i met and and it's the same thing we've both been part of the the uh web monetization standard community um and that's been very much the same in that community where you know people are all wanting to help each other and boost each other up so that uh so that we can kind of you know, turn, turn the space into, into something that is, is viable long-term. Uh, and it's exciting and, and it's wonderful because you, you're getting to meet and getting to know all sorts of different people. Like I, I feel like Adam's a good buddy of mine now and, you know, we've, we've never, and which I'm assuming probably is the case with um, Melissa, you and Shane, that you haven't actually ever met in real life. No, <laughs> no, we, we chat um like uh, melissa ryan and myself chat what every other night it, it feels i like guess it's a little bit sure. i guess a little bit busy for you right now too but yeah we used to we, we chat a lot um yeah I, I reached out to melissa i read her story and i was like yeah and i'll do whatever's needed to to help but because her story need to be told and need to be seen so yeah. yeah, I have to say, Melissa, it is pretty awesome. And it, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to see something that has heart in so many different ways. Um, you know, finding, uh, finding, finding, you know, such um, a positive way of sort of sharing and growing and building community out there it's 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 really lovely to see it 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 immediately i i discovered your your content through through the link on shane's twitter and it immediately put a smile on my face i'm like oh i like this thank you very much uh that's just the nicest thing i can hear from anyone and it's it's been 
incredible the journey I've been through and um, to meet all the people I have. It's been, it's a nice way to take some, you know, pain that I've had and maybe help other people with pain or journeys or whatever they have to get through. So it's been cool. Yeah, no, that's very cool. I'm, I'm, my, my uh, creative partner and I are sort of tackling, uh, sort of approaching into a project uh, like that at the moment in a very different way than, than you, but uh, it it really sings to my heart when I see other people do it and do it in such a, such a positive and uplifting kind of way. Thank you. Um, So Adam, Yes, I was just making sure you're still there. Um, it uh, so you've been kind of doing a you've been dabbling in a few different areas in the NFT space. Like I know you've been uh, playing and creating some of your own art out there, um, but you've also been like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you were doing on GFAM uh, with um, with the XRP tipping to access certain posts could technically be termed an NFT. Ooh, uh, that's an interesting. So I I wouldn't necessarily call it an NFT, um, but we are actually working on functionality so that people can create content, whether that's like a post or a lesson or something like that, and then mint an NFT and basically sell or auction that to provide exclusive unlocking of their content. Um, So that will be an NFT. Um, but I actually wanted to clear up uh, one of your concerns from earlier. Yeah. So you were a little little worried that um, NFTs might become inaccessible for a lot of people. Uh, and obviously not many of us can, can purchase a $69 million Beeple NFT, but there are lots of NF- NFTs around um, that you can buy, you know, cards for a sixth of a cent or a tenth of a cent. Um, There's, you know, I think NFTs can really open up a lot to lots of people around the world. I I should, I should, I should clarify that, that I'm not so concerned that uh, more my concern is, is about uh, creating barriers uh, to culture and education on the web. Uh, right. And so, so more of my concern is, is if that becomes the norm for everything out there, um, that, that we then have walls around everything and that creates a tiered system. Yeah. And I think that's fair enough. I don't think that's the way things are going to go. Uh, if anything, you know, at the moment you might have to travel to a particular country in order to see or collect a piece of art because you're physically going to pick it up. Uh, and I think that NFTs will open up a lot more, lots of cultural items for, for anyone to collect or view or interact with around the world. Uh, so I kind, of, I kind of see it as opening up things a lot more. Um, and really, like, if you think... The world is a little bit, uh, it's hard to get assets in terms of there's lots of barriers to entry to get assets like real estate or stocks or bonds or any of that sort of stuff. Um, I think that NFTs, uh, one, you know, it becomes a collectible thing that anyone can really um, get access to, but also things can be broken up. So, um In the real world, an apartment or an apartment block or anything can be divided up and tokenized so that many people can own one thing or, you know, own a 50th of an apartment or whatever or a sporting team or anything like that. So I think, I think if anything, NFTs should make assets and uh, art and all sorts of things a lot more accessible. Um, But I guess we'll, we'll have to see how these things go. Um, one project that I've really enjoyed watching is a game called Splinterlands. And so that is a game on uh, the Hive blockchain. And that uh, people are are basically purchasing these cards um, from anywhere around the world. And then they're kind of like, the game is that you fight each other with these cards that you've collected. So you're fighting people with your cards that you own. 
Um, and a lot of these are super, super cheap and some of them are really, really expensive. And obviously there's different rarities and demand and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it's amazing to watch people purchase things that they then play with uh, as, you know, I think that's kind of where games will go in the future. Um, you know, a game like Fortnite uh, was free to play, but then people spent money on outfits and stuff like that. And those those things aren't really transferable outside of the game where NFTs are. Um, so, yeah, I think NFTs have so much scope and so much possibility that it's a little overwhelming. And again, I do still think that there is a space for this just beyond that idea of ownership. Um, mm. Because I, I, I think as we start to like, I, yeah, it's, I mean, and, and I, I think this is one of the big things right now, like, you know, for um, uh, my buddy, Steve, um, he and I were chatting last night, because uh, he was back, you know, involved in the days of, uh, of the early launch of crypto kitties and, and was kind of playing in that space back then before a lot of people kind of realized what it was all about yeah um, I, i've still got some crypto kitties he he was he was talking about like you know how um a couple of the stumbling blocks in the space is one um you know having having a use for for those 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 pieces of artwork but uh in in this i kept hearing over and over again too at nft con as i've been listening the last couple of days um is is that we need to start thinking beyond just the the ownership of the arts. We need to start, you know, playing and experimenting with 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 what does an NFT look like in education. I know myself yeah. as an educator, and I know that we've got uh, Michelle as an educator on our call right now. Um, and by all means, Michelle, if you want to come up and you want to add in your two cents or your thoughts on any of this, uh, feel free. The same goes for everybody else on our call. Um, I know Tachi is an artist and possibly has done some experimenting. If I don't know if anybody else here on the call has done some experimenting in these spaces, but if you do want to come up, uh, you are invited. Um, uh, so uh, just to add to that point yeah. that you were making, Erica. So there's a project on the XRP blockchain mm -hmm. uh, that is basically um, you create your will as an NFT and you put that to the blockchain. So that isn't anything to do with art, um, but because the blockchain is forever, um, it, it means that, you know, a, a, a file is basically stored on a blockchain um, and, you know, something like your will is really important, but can also be somewhat mis misplaced or you have to, you know, contact specific lawyers and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, there's lots of projects that aren't related to art, but are related to NFTs. Yes, yes. I, but I just think that we can think beyond just like, for example, I've seen a film that has been released where uh, it was released as an NFT um, and people could, um, you know, purchase tickets for, for access, but it, it wasn't sort of an ownership thing. Does that make sense? No. Oh, absolutely. So there's a project called Stoner Cats, and basically the NFT is the ticket itself to watch the program that they're making called Stoner Cats. And so the company that's doing that, um, when you own your Stoner Cat, which is your ticket, you'll also get future content that they also provide. So it basically becomes your ticket to their content, which means that the producers of that uh, animation don't have to go through the normal Hollywood funding of, you know, finding a financer. They can basically just open it to the public and the public will crowdsource the production of, of their content, uh, which is amazing and super cool. And that's kind of the thing that we're looking to build into, into GFAM. I think that's cool. Mila Kunis, right? Yes, She's correct. Kind of the kind of the spearhead behind uh, Stoner Cats. Yeah, yeah, it's a super cool project, and it really just opens up a lot of financing for a lot of creatives. And they they couldn't get funding because 
because it's a stoner cat. So, you know, it had that kind of drug element. Um, and so no one would fund them. They just, no one wanted a piece of that. And then when they launched their NFT, again, they sold out overnight um, because there was a big demand for funny. it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Totally. Yeah, totally. Everybody pictures the cat on catnip. <laughs> right, exactly. Toppling over, yeah. Um, uh, no, and that that's exciting. That's, if uh, somebody wanted to get started with starting to build an NFT, where do they begin? Like, how do you, Melissa, um, or or Shane, or Adam, how do you turn that piece of artwork or that piece of real estate into an NFT? How do you put it on the blockchain? Um, so, I mean, I think Melissa and Shane could probably add a lot more to this, but essentially you find a website like OpenSea or Rarible or Mintable, um, and they'll help you through the process of minting your art to the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, the Ethereum blockchain is super expensive in terms of gas fees. So there's other sites like NFT Showroom uh, where there are no fees. Um, so it can be quite accessible for people to mint their artwork if that's what they want to do. So, so Melissa, can you walk us through that process for you? So I use OpenSea and um, I pick that for um, once you do, I think, a mint once or twice you don't have to mint again with a with a fee um the minting can get kind of expensive um and the actual process of minting an nft on OpenSea is really easy um it's everything that before that is kind of confusing so let me let me start there when you mint you just upload your image to uh the website and you set a few parameters and you just hit you know, mint and that's it. Um, the, but to get to that point, it, it takes a few steps. So to be able to um, get, so you, you have to go to an exchange, um, like a, I, I, I'm assuming you want me to go into all of this. So mm -hmm. to, you need an exchange. So I use Coinbase as my exchange and you have to bring in money. I put in like $300 um, from Chase to the exchange it took like seven days to clear um, and I got my money in Ethereum and then I took that Ethereum money and I sent it to a wallet and then I took that wallet and I connected it to OpenSea um, and then I was able to create my NFT. Uh, I don't know if I explained that to the <laughs> well enough so let me know if you want me to repeat any of that but there's, it's kind of technical to get to the point of minting, but the actual minting of an NFT on a marketplace is quite easy when you're there. And Shane, you've, you've, done, um, you've done it with something different than a piece of art. So is that different when you're, when you're say, doing it with uh, real estate? Because I know you're on OpenSea as well. Um, so I, I'm going to fill everybody in. Uh, I, I myself actually don't do any of the minting. So that, that okay. actually comes from the original person. His name is mm -hmm. Jason. He's still part of the project. I'm just like one of the partners in on it. Um, so right now we're just minting on OpenSea right now. However, um, because Tower 2 is going to be paid to mint and the way that we want to structure it, uh, we actually have to use like a smart contract. Um, so we actually have a developer is building our smart contract. Uh, it, it requires a little more technical skill um, because uh, when you are minting, you know, off of uh, sort of off of contract, um, there's there's a bunch of technical stuff that takes place in the background. Uh, you you just don't want people to be able to hack in and essentially mint a whole bunch of them um, at a really low gas gas rate. Um, but uh, uh, I always encourage people watch a lot of YouTube videos. There's uh, one guy by the name of Hashlips. Um, he does amazing, amazing YouTube videos. I cannot stress this enough. It quite literally will teach you how to create your very own generative art, like AI generative art, make it one off uh, one pieces. Um, you can learn in like two and a half hours. It's uh, pretty crazy. So if, if you guys do have, you know, sort of like a, a, a drawing in mind and maybe you want to you know manipulate it in you know three thousand different ways uh he actually walks you through the steps uh all using free tools too um to help with that creation and then how to actually post it on OpenSea. 
and and presumably you know that would be possible with somebody's uh, film or their web series or their video or say um, uh, with authors with a with a book um, or or a um, or um, or even like you know if we're, we're talking educators with their with their lesson plans or educational videos that would all be possible through something like OpenSea too, yes? I, I don't know if you'd want to use OpenSea just because they're okay. on the Ethereum network. Um, yeah. I, I guess you could always use Polygon on there, um, at which point gas fees are very, very small. But if you are using the Ethereum network, like be prepared to pay a, a pretty hefty fee unless you're going to do it at like, I think the cheapest I've ever seen it was like Saturday at like 3 a.m. in the morning when I was finishing up DMs. Um, it, gas is not not very cheap. Be pretty okay. okay, okay. Now, Adam, you're you're aware of what Ripple's doing right now with with trying to launch um, with with launching into to like the the XRP ledger where they want to start getting involved in NFTs as well. Yeah. So what? Um, so presumably there would be a different sort of markets pl place for like minting your projects for for a space like like that where in XRP is is more affordable for for a lot of people if we're talking things like educational things or or is yeah so I think um, so I think really what they're intending to do is use platforms like Mintable um, where you can actually in the top left hand uh, right hand corner you can select what blockchain you want to use. Um, so, you know, you might have it set to Ethereum, but then you can just change it to XRP and then you'd use the same platform, Mintable, um, but you just use it on the XRP blockchain. And so XRP has almost no fees. Like they're really, really tiny. I think they're like like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000012 or is it like that's the fee. Like it's, it's just nothing compared to Ethereum uh, gas fees. And then you mentioned earlier my friend Andrew, who is the CEO of the Coinos network, and they're building a smart contract blockchain that will have no fees. So once someone builds or once they build um, an NFT type showroom on that blockchain, then people will, will be able to mint things with no fee. Um, so that should be a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Uh, Ethereum gas prices can be pretty scary at times. They really so, can be. <laughs> so like how that. do you how do you make that decision then? Like uh, when you're trying to decide, like okay, you've got something that you want to get minted out there so that you can start to um to you know sell copies of your book or sell copies of you know of, of different lesson materials or I, i'm still trying to wrap my head around um i've been doing a lot in the open education space just with uh with building building kind of equity and um and things like that around the world so i'm still trying to wrap around how i can swing this into open ed uh which i haven't quite wrapped my head around yet but hopefully it'll hit me at some point um, yeah i mean nfts can be anything really yeah. anything you know, the problem with open ed is open ed is open access right so right. so people aren't paying um uh i don't have a problem with people paying because we all need to pay our bills um uh and uh, <laughs> i've spent far too much of my life working for free right. or for very little <laughs> um, um but but uh so so how does one make the decision on where where like where and how they're going to get minted and what marketplace they're going to be sharing uh their nft on yeah so i think the most important thing is to work out where your community is or your customers or the people that are demanding the thing that you would want to mint so if a lot of those people are really comfortable with the ethereum blockchain then that's you know then you might use OpenSea or rarible or one of those platforms that use ethereum if you know a lot of your people are on the hive blockchain then you would use nft showroom uh, so really, it comes down to the community that you have and where the, they're the most comfortable. And if your community is not comfortable with any of those things, then uh, 
you might have to educate them on on how to access your NFTs. So on that note, like, uh, where is the XRP community at the moment? Uh, so XRP is building NFTs into their system, uh, into the blockchain. So it's not something that I think is available just yet. Uh, so I don't believe they have a platform, but they've actually funded a bunch of projects to build platforms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we see something coming in the next six months. Cool, cool. Um, and so, so with all of this right now, uh, where I, well, okay so so one thing i'm just curious on too is um melissa and shane you're both um really big on building communities around your your nfts right now on um oh and i'm having a mind blank on the platform right now discord um is is that is that specifically tied to like the open sea community being in that space or is that more of a general uh space where people who are excited about nfts are are used to gathering at the moment from my experience it's uh the art community that i'm in um is in OpenSea and then Twitter and then Discord. And those all, all three of those are open at any one time during the day for me. Um, Twitter is good to meet people, but if you want to hear about the, so like Shane's project to actually hear about him and the, the, the other people that are actually developing it, you go to their Discord to see what's happening behind the scenes. Um, and they, it's a really, really good um, test to see if that project has good people behind it and if it's going to succeed. So Twitter is a good place to meet and kind of have that banter, learn about new projects. But Discord, in my opinion, in my experience, has been the place where you do a deep dive into should I invest in this project or not? Yeah, yeah. D Discord is just the tool. So Discord is like Twitter or Slack or Facebook or anything like that. It's really just a tool that any community can, can come to because setting up a server is free. Yeah, yeah I was going to mention that exact piece. Uh, it, it is essentially like a, a tool um, uh, to help obviously sell yourself, sell the project and kind of let the community kind of do their thing. Um, uh, obviously... Our number one focus is actually community um, because you, you're going to be meta living with these people. Um, so, you know, getting the, the lay of the land, figuring out exactly where you want to kind of involve yourself uh, in terms of the different amenities um, is, is a huge part of, of what we're doing. Um, yeah, I would say 99% of our people are all on OpenSea. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones that are scouring, looking for different projects. Um, I obviously also have Twitter open, uh, quite often throughout the day, but, um, uh, my main, my main thing right now is, uh, living off of discord. So. And, and that was purposely cause that was where the, the NFT community was already hanging out. Is that correct, Shane? Yeah. Yeah. And the NFT community is, uh, is in discord and telegram and that's kind of their two uh, means and Twitter. I guess three things I should say, but yeah, like uh, the the best way to, to to describe Discord maybe is almost like you remember like the old school like chat rooms um, that you used to pop into. Um, you get the same sort of like feel, um, except now you're you become really good friends with these people. They're they're constantly in sort of your chat room the entire time. Um, you mean to. Uh, People from all over the place. Obviously, I've become friends with uh, a lot of people from Australia because it's their early morning. They're popping in, saying hi to everyone um, before they head out for the day. Uh, I meet a lot of people from Singapore. Um, one of the partners on this project is actually from the UK. So, um, yeah, it's quite literally people around the world that I I, I get a chit chat with on uh, on an everyday basis. It's pretty wild. Very cool. Um, now, with all this, um, one of the big barriers um, 
that sort of existed when my my friend Steve was exploring the space back in 2017 is still here as far as like uh, the uses for some of these art uh, NFTs. Where do you see the the opportunities for for those in the future? If you say um, if you say own you know a piece of um, NFT art or uh, one of these NFT avatars. I guess I, I want to hear a little bit more um, sort of the reason why um, he feels that way. Like, uh, yeah, yeah um, one I mean, more it, deep dive question. So, so, so and I, it, it's not just Steve that said this. I, I heard this mentioned, you know, sort of repeatedly in, in a number of different spaces, but, but it's that idea that right now, you and and granted like you know I've got art that I'm looking at on the wall in my house and you know that's what I bought it for was to put on the wall in my house but um um back in the day and and Steve actually sent me his um one of his his descriptions for um for for a, a a product that they they'd created but the the idea was that there would actually be uses for for the sort of some of the art, some of the avatars that were getting created. So um, Adam mentioned it earlier with the film, um, or with the the um, what was it, stoner stoner cats? Stoner cats, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would like that cat would would give them access, like if you have a stoner cat that you then have access to to their future projects is that just going to be for the one one movie um adam or will that be for all their future projects no i think it was projects. for everything that studio was going to create oh, under the name stoner cat uh no not necessarily I, oh, okay but whatever so the studio was that creates it whatever their future projects were i believe the stoner cat was going to give access to all of that future content as well wow that's huge um uh yeah so like what they'll probably end up doing is they'll have like another project and they'll probably end up airdropping a bunch of those to existing stoner cats and that way they can actually build up even more revenue by selling additional nfts for that potential new uh project as well um keeping their their you know cop coppers i think that's the word i'm looking for you know kind of full so that they can continuously produce new 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 contact or content yeah, yeah, I could see the, something like that working quite well with something too, like say, exploding kittens. Um, <laughs> as as it, well, it's it's it goes like it's like the whole idea too of uh, well, so so back with 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 some of the ideas that I saw rolling around, you know, back in that 2017 space, it was also ideas that you could use those different objects in different spaces, like so potentially the idea of, of taking um, those objects um, into different virtual worlds with you um, where they would unlock different things within games or uh, within a movie or, or things, things like that. Um, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm not in the art space with, with NFTs. So, so for those of you that are, or have been watching that, have you like been hearing thoughts, inklings about what people are thinking of doing, doing as far as having additional uses to some of, to some of that art? I'll tell you this once, once they're able to integrate NFTs into video games, buy as many of those NFTs as you possibly can. Um, because I mean, th that's already it. happening, Shane. So yeah. there's there's tons of projects. So there's one called uh, Zerp Worlds that basically it's it's similar to Minecraft, but literally every material that you make or that you mine or whatever is an individual NFT. And then if you want to like I don't know make a table, you would be combining ten NFTs to make a new NFT, which is that table or sword or whatever. Um, and yeah, Splinterlands has millions of NFTs that people are using and combining to level up their cards. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot in the video game space already. Yeah, and I think NFT World just came out 
I think that they minted last week, and it's actually got like direct ties to Minecraft, um, where you you own like specific Minecraft worlds. If I remember correctly, because I think there's Minecraft teams actually hopping on board now too. Um, but like I, I'm I'm thinking more like uh, CS:GO, uh, Fortnite, where you know you own that one of one. Um, look at what uh, CS:GO, you know, butterfly knives go for. Um, you know, and, and they're, they're five thousand of them, but they go for twenty thousand dollars a pop. Wow! Um, so, yeah. yeah, but the demand is there. <laughs> the demand is there, um, and, and that'll eventually trickle into, you know, the NFT space. And when you own a one hundred and one, um, yeah, you're going to see um, the money from gaming start to filter over into the NFT world. <sighs> Um, so I'm just going to put this out there to the audience. Um, if there's anybody who'd like to come up and uh, either share, you know, some sort of experience that you've had with NFTs or who would like to ask a question to our, our wonderful um, panelists today, that would, um, you, you are invited to do so. Just uh, click on the round circle at the side and you should see... Um, uh, actually, you know what you can do is just click on the plus sign at the top here where it says speakers and and I'll get a little notification and uh, and then sort of pop you up on the stage. Um, but why we're just seeing if anybody would like to ask any questions or to join us. Um, what advice would you give to somebody who's new to entering sort of the the, the space of NFTs? Uh, be careful what you pay in gas prices. Uh, number one thing I always tell everybody, do your due diligence. Um, look at everything that you possibly can on the project before you're, you're, you're investing anything into NFTs. Um, on top of that as well, uh, you know, at the end of the day, do not, um, do not invest more than you're willing to lose. Um, we've all been there. Uh, where we've invested in NFT projects that have not taken off the way that you thought. Um, so just, uh, yeah. And I would add, uh, if you're wanting to get into the NFT world, uh, don't just read articles. Go go to OpenSea, go to Discord, go to Twitter, go get involved in the community. Even if you don't buy anything right away, just see what people are talking about, especially in the art community, PFP, PFP community, things like that. You, you learn so much more than reading an article on, um, you know, that, that, that's how I started, but it, it, you, I've learned so much in the 45 days that I've been in this space. And, and on that note, um, I believe the other half of who's been in that space with you has joined us on the stage. Is, is that your Ryan that's there? Yeah. That, that is my Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, if you hit on the um, the unmute yourself at the bottom of the page, right next to the React button. I wasn't sure if you were going to make the connection there. <laughs> I looked why why way earlier. I looked to see who everybody was in the audience, and I I saw I saw your last name. So <laughs> so unless there was a second Ryan that had wandered into the conversation. <laughs> Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me um, just say a couple words. You were talking about like real world use there <clears throat> at the end, and I was thinking about how many projects are bringing real world utility to a lot of their NFTs, especially in that whole kind of use the term avatar, but that profile picture type space. And there are a, a number of projects that are bringing. In like in real life utility to that. So those tokens, if you will, those avatars, those PFPs are your access point to real world things. And so one of the big ones in the space that recently went to like Christie's auction, I believe <clears throat> um, they're buying a clubhouse in Miami and your access code to the clubhouse is your, is your NFT. There's others that are doing big meetups uh, in different cities across the world. There's some where they're rewarding original holders of their of their NFTs and dropping collaborative pieces 
um, for free to their, to their holders. There's some that are um, dropping like real world art that you can um, take and have. So it's a, it's a pretty neat um, tons of uh, whether it's a access to a network or it's a, a private club or whatever, um, which, you know, speaking to your equity piece earlier, it, it does become a bit of an exclusive thing in some of these, but some are really about how do they collaborate um, with other up and coming artists too, and giving voices to other up and coming artists and dropping collaborative pieces to their holders. And it opens up this whole new network that that up and coming artists never maybe wouldn't have, maybe they couldn't have uh, been in that. There was one I was on the other day, um, it's called an AMA and ask me anything. And they had artists that they were doing a collaborate, uh, collaborative projects with from around the world. Some of them could barely speak English. I mean, it was, it was really incredible people from everywhere that would never, um, almost like likely never have that kind of access to a global audience. So it's, it's really, really, really incredible what's happening in the space. So I, I just wanted to comment on that. Yeah, that's what I've been finding has been really exciting with that web monetization space too, is, is those. And, and I think, I think mm -hmm. even too, you know, it's one of the, the good things that's come out of COVID is, is that we're now communicating and engaging much more on a global level. Uh, and so, so you're getting these foster, like fostering, um, sort of these, these, uh, collaborations and these engagements with, um, with people from all over the world. Um, Fireside has done that for me. Um, I've, I've been regularly partaking in, in my, um, my friend Rafe's show from, uh, from Poland. So, you know, a bunch of us, uh, all get together each week from, um, uh, you know, all across Europe, which is, which, which has been, which has been fun. Uh, so, uh, Ryan, why we've got you, do we still have Ryan? Oh no, we lost Ryan. Um, Oh, there he is. Um, uh, excellent. Um, I was just gonna, to pose that, that, that question to you, what advice would you give somebody, you know, new that's entering the space? So um, I think there's a lot of people out there that, and we kind of talk um, in our house a lot, how we're in a bit of the dial-up phase of NFTs. This is dial-up over telephone wire connection. Um, it's the beginning of the beginning. And so I think a lot of people though, um, that we've talked about personally, the NFTs too, they have, no, it's like we're on a different planet. Um, but if you have any kind of inkling towards this space, towards this kind of next evolution in art, in collectibles, in um, community, do not pass go, you know, do not collect $100, get into it, uh, figure out a way, you join these communities, everybody's so helpful here um, in these spaces, it's, it's really incredible. So if you're on the fence, I mean, jump in both feet. And, uh, and, and don't hesitate. That would be, um, what I'd say. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I have to say, I, as I've been kind of peeking and poking and exploring in different places, I've, I've, I've kind of been kicking myself for not having sort of dove in sooner. Um, it, it's exciting. It's exciting what's happening there. Um, I think, and, uh, literally everyone feels that way, Erica. <laughs> that they should have got in sooner <laughs> oh yeah you're you're amongst everyone that says that like why didn't i pick up a board ape when they were you know 0 0.07 and you know why didn't i get in d friends when you know it was 0.1 you know it, it's one of those things that well, um you feel like it, you've missed out but honestly like it's just well, this is this is this is what I was just about to say too, and I think especially like I'm I'm in different um, like I think especially in these other areas too that you know that haven't really sort of fully um, started building in the space like you know it's really early days I think for filmmakers for people building immersive worlds in the in those spaces for. Um, for edge i mean it's it's early days for artists too but but i also think it's like you know 
for for educators, I, I did some poking around and I, I haven't seen a ton out there yet, uh, you know, um, uh, in, you know, for, for, for educators and stuff like that in the space. And so I, I think I'm just kind of excited to see what, what sort of emerges and I'm excited to try and figure out what, what sorts of things I might experiment with and, and play with in the space. And now that I know, thanks to Melissa, that I'm not giving away all my copyright by sharing stuff in there. I, I think I might start experimenting with some of the things that, that I've already created. Um, and then, you should and then, you know, play with, you know, building some new things. Sorry, what were you going to say, Melissa? I just was going to say, you should definitely get in the space. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm only in the art space and I mm -hmm. don't, how to integrate other, you know, like film, I, I, different things like that. But it, it's, you just got to try it and just see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of like, I, I'm, I'm originally a scientist. And so, so I love, I love the whole idea of experimenting. And, and really, the early days of the web for me, were all about throwing the mud on the wall and seeing what stuck. So Thank you all for for spending this time with us this evening. Um, uh, thank you, Adam and Ryan and Melissa and Shane. And thank you to all of you who have uh, been hanging out with us in the audience. Um, it's It's been really wonderful to to have all of you here tonight and and to be sharing all of your your ideas and your your experiences um, in in what's what promises to be really kind of an exciting and evolving um and dynamic space out there thanks erica thank you yeah happy to chat it was awesome thank you everybody and uh have a great night out there bye-bye